Um, testing your knowledge, your previous knowledge in politics. This one. Can you guys tell me who this guy is? No. Anyone? No. <laughs> Any guesses? I just said that. Say it louder. Good job. He is the governor of California, people. You guys claim that you know politics. So yeah, you guys claim to know that you know politics, but really, you guys don't even know the governor of California. So today, I'm going to explain the... Nervous, okay. Today I'm going to explain the claims made on Prop 30. Him along with Bill, Cl or, yeah, Bill, Cl Bill Clinton are supporters of Prop 30. So today we're going to go over what does Prop 30 do for us, where does, does it make a difference, where does our money go, and what does the government gain. So, how does it affect us? That's what we're mostly concerned about. It increases sales tax, of course. So in Fullerton, according to the State Board of Equalization, it's 7.75 right now, it's going to raise to 8%, and it increases personal income taxes on higher um, higher income rates on upper income taxpayers for seven years. The, it raises state revenue by about six billion from the years of 2012 and 2017. It even started in 2011, even though this prop has not been formed, which I thought was interesting that we didn't know about that. And it prevents a six billion dollar cut in schools this year. It prevents steep tuition for colleges, which you know is not true because it's going up again. Um, okay, so mathematically, this is what it means. Did you guys know the population was 38 million in California? Fun fact for your friends. So, <laughs> it said seven years, and $6 billion in revenue. So over here, I, well, are you guys math majors, anyone? No? Okay, so this is going to be a bunch of gibberish. But 30, the population times the days, seven years, divided by how many dollars it's going to save. So about every day we're going to pay $16.18 a day if this proposition passes in order to cut, in, in order to prevent the budget. This is what the like sales tax going up means. So if you guys aren't happy, so where does the money go? It balances the state budget in 2008. 18, 2019. This is straight from the proposition, which is kind of scary. And if projected by voters in 2012, it reduces the budget by six billion. Like the California state deficit, it lowers it by six billion. Okay, so this is straight from the proposition. Guarantees local government to receive tax revenues annually to fund programs. Doesn't say exactly what programs it funds. It says safety, public, like public safety, local public safety, and everything. But it doesn't say education. Even though the ads on TV that you see, maybe it's saying the education, the funds are going to go to education, but it doesn't exactly say that in the prop. It does not pass like a backup plan to transfer state program responsibilities to state local state governments. But that's just how government works. Like local governments have some power, but it's going to put more power into local governments, like your Belinda, essentially all those little little cities. And so this little graph, this is the total, this is what we spend money on in California. This is the education, and this is K through 12, so that's your, until high school. And then higher education, we don't really get that much funding. And how much funding we actually get. So 89% of the budget goes towards education to everyone at K through 12th grade, and then only 11% goes to community college. So that's us, only 11%, which is kind of shocking for me. And this is from the Secretary of State website. Okay, so today we covered how Prop 30 could affect us, where our money goes, and the local government programs that it will be funded by Prop 30. It doesn't exactly say, it just says public safety and everything. So now that you guys are more informed about what Prop 30 does, by like, by reputable sites instead of just what you hear through TV, through the hallways, or like your friends' personal opinions, you actually are informed on what it 
actually means. So my next question is, what box will, what, <laughs> what box would you check next for Prop 30? Yes. Vote to <laughs> Tuesday, November 6th. So Jessica, what did you think? Well, I liked your attention brother. Like I thought it was kind of fun and interactive with the audience. And it kind of got me into it. <laughs> I also liked her visuals and how she explained them. So I thought it was pretty, pretty good because I didn't have any questions about it. Because like, like, when she was talking about it, I kind of had a question like, okay, why is it this way? But then she went back and explained it with the picture. I really liked that. The only thing is that she was really nervous. That kind of detoured from the presentation. But All right, I thought the little ID game was probably fine to get the audience's attention, but it did seem like there was a sudden shift in the topic. Uh, all of a sudden, we're talking about Proposition 30. I think you need to do a little bit more to talk about why the governor, you know, this is basically his initiative, you know, this is his baby, this is how he's trying to fix the budget problems, and so that we could see a little bit clearer relationship why that attention device works for this particular subject. Otherwise, it just felt like, Okay, so we got that, and now we're talking about Prop 30, and why why are they related to each other? And I think that uh, you missed that. Uh, your thesis, I think, is pretty clear. It seemed like there was a preview, but it rushed by, and I think there might have been a uh, visual that went with it. But I looked down to write something, and when I looked up, there was it was gone. So I'm not sure what happened, and I think maybe you rushed that section of the of the presentation. Because later on, I thought that your organization was not very clear and that you needed to do a better job making transitions from ideas because it just felt like you were rushing from one idea to the next, especially when you had all the charts that you start putting up and they come up one after another and there's a lot of information on all of them and it's not always clear how they are, are structured, why they're in this particular part of the speech. And I think that like I said, that uh, you could help yourself a little bit more by maybe some just some pacing at the beginning, because if, if you do have a preview, it'll be clearer when that information comes up. I did think you did a good job citing uh, that the, where the information came from and explaining when you did some calculations. Uh, the calculation that you explained on uh, the amount of money, was that, that $16 a day, is that per person in, in uh, Orange County, for instance? Uh, that's what I think you needed to explain a little bit more. It really felt like, okay, you went to the effort to make all this calculation, and then you didn't explain what it meant in the end. So basically, pi passing Prop 30, as I understand it, what you're saying is everyone in here will be paying $16 a day for 7,222 days in order to cover Prop 30. All right, so that yeah, that's that's the way you need to put it for people so that they know what it is that you mean. So what does it mean financially to pass Prop 30? That means that you are committing to vote, you know, paying this amount of money each day. And I think that I didn't think that that came across the way uh, you wanted it to. I don't think it was very clear at the end. Uh, and then there are a couple of other charts when you, you're talking about the amount of expenditures for education, and you mentioned community colleges, for instance. Um, the one chart that you had was talking about total expenditures. It seemed like it would make more sense to have like a pie chart that talks about state expenditures on education and where we are in comparison to everybody else. Uh, the, the line graph that you have there, I didn't think was very clear about illustrating that point. Um, I, I did like the fact that you had uh, graphics in the presentation and you're trying to use them to explain concepts, but sometimes they